David here with the Unreal Film Academy. If you'd like to access the project files used in this video, then check out the link in the description below to sign up for a free preview, including these four lessons. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is lights inside Unreal. We're gonna do this from the perspective of a lighting department. Now, if you look at this preview panel, you can see clearly there's a few different lights hitting our actor in this scene. So we have this orange light clearly coming from this lamp, but we also have this kind of daylight here and this kind of softish light hitting the front, making sure the shadows don't get too dark. Now, it can be tricky trying to find lights, like we can see there's one here, there's one here, but really one of the better ways to go about finding stuff in our scene that we know what it's called is to use this window up here called the outliner. So if I make this a little bit bigger, you can see a list of everything in the scene. It's kind of like an index. Every little picture frame, every light, the carpet, everything is listed up here in the outliner. But obviously we don't want to scroll through here and search for stuff because that's kind of time consuming. Even though we can see this one has an icon for static mesh and this one's a camera, it doesn't make it that much easier to find what we're looking for. So instead, let's click up the top where it says search and start typing light. And now we get a bunch of different types of lights that come up. So over here under our standing lamp, we have our point light. This is in our scene right here. So you can see this one's a practical light. It's in the frame and part of the scene. So if we click on this point light, either here or up in the outliner, we'll see the details panel down the bottom right. Now, just like before, when we clicked on the camera, there is different sections. And just like before, there is many, many different settings that we'd never need to worry about. So let's focus on the most important. The transform right here, as with every object, controls the location and rotation. And then we have the light settings. Now, almost all the settings you need for the light are visible right here. But the most important is the intensity and if you're using it, the temperature or the color, depending on how you like to use your lights. So let's try and play with the intensity. Maybe we want a much stronger light coming from behind. Right now, it's measured at one candela. Now you don't really need to worry about what a candela is. Just know that two is bigger than one. So if we put up a two in there instead, we get twice the brightness. Let's try a four maybe even an eight. I think I prefer a four. Now, right now, I've set the light to use temperature. So this light has been, this box has been ticked on and then the temperature has been set to a different number. If you wanna see what the default settings are like, you can see this little arrow right here. And if you hover over it, it says reset this property to its default value. So this tells you that the property has been modified. So I'm gonna just show you what it's like without temperature. So if we wanted to change the color of our light using the light color, we just click on this box right here and then we can change the light. So I'm gonna move over towards the orange and then once I get a hue that I like, I can up the saturation. Now, I actually find this to be a less effective way. If you've got any training in cinematography or a basic understanding of lights, you'll know that there's this thing called temperature in Kelvin. So I like to use that. So to use that, we tick on use temperature. Now let's just reset this and you'll get something that looks like this. It's identical to the white color. As you can see, it makes no change ticking it on and off. If you know a little bit about the various lights and the temperature in Kelvin that they emit, you can start changing these values. So for example, a tungsten light, which is the one that you'd usually see in your home that offers that warm, nice glow, that homey feeling, is around 3200 Kelvin. So if we type that in, instantly we get something that looks like a warm, homely light. So let's say this was a fire or a candle. We could go lower to like 1800 and we get this 
really warm glow that you would get from a candle. If this was uh, meant to be from a daylight and it was overcast outside, we might go up to 8,000 and we'll get this much more like bluey tinge. And you don't really need to know all these values off by heart, although they're easy to find on the internet. You can really just grab this slider and move it up or down and find what you like and you just know that you're going to get a, a, a pretty realistic result. So let's change this back to 3200. We're not going to look at any of the other settings, then for more advanced sessions later on. But we do want to recognize that a point light is a different type of light to some of these other ones we have. So this light emits light in every direction possible. So right now it's inside the lamp and it's hitting the lamp and not going beyond it. But if I was to take it out, for example, you can see that it just emits in every single direction. Now, that's nice enough for this example, but it's not what we want for a lot of others. So let's go up to the top right in our outliner where we've searched for light, and we'll look at this one on the list, the rect light. So this stands for rectangle light. Now I've selected it, but it's not anywhere on my screen. I could search around and I'll eventually find it. But if I press F while having my viewport activated, it'll take me to the light and frame it for me. This is a rectangle light. Now what's happening here is it's drawing a rectangle and it's emitting light from that entire rectangle. Now this type of light is really common in film sets. It kind of gives this soft, nice shadows and lighting. So if we look over on the right here, we have our usual values, our transform, our rotation, but we also have the light settings. These ones are a bit different to the point light you might notice. So right now, it's got a source width and source height. This is how big the rectangle is, and it's gonna change a lot about how the light falls on your scene. So a very small size will make very harsh sharp and hard shadows. Whereas a much bigger light with a much bigger surface area is going to make softer shadows. So let's just change this to something tiny, something silly, like a five by five light. And you can see from these shadows here how harsh they become. I'm just going to control Z, control Z, and it's back to being soft. Now, just like the other light, it has temperature, it has color, it has intensity, so we can change all those. It also has barn door. So what the barn door is designed to do is cut out light hitting the outside. So if we look at our stage over here, you can see the lights hit in there and we don't necessarily need it to. So we can grab the barn door angle. It's currently set to 88, so that's pretty much fully wide. It's not blocking any light and we can scope this down. And you can see over here, the edges of the, of the light start scoping in a bit. We can also change the length of these barn doors to accentuate the effect. You also see that the icon itself changes to show you what's happening with the barn doors. All right, that's enough of the area light. Now I'm gonna show you another light called the spotlight. So if we, over on our outliner, let's click the spotlight and instantly we see this funnel. So let's go and have a look. Press, if we activate our viewport by right clicking in it, press F, it's gonna fill this, our screen with this light. Now this light's been put behind the camera. The spotlight emits from a single point in a cone. And this cone that we see here is how far it emits. So if we check out the details panel over here, we can see the same old settings. Now I'm gonna show you another setting that's been on all the lights, but is actually somewhat important. And it's called the attenuation radius. And what this does is it controls how far the light can go. So Unreal's a game engine. It, it, it has to be optimized for real time. And that means it has to cut corners in certain places. So light can't just travel infinitely around the scene, bouncing everywhere. So to increase the performance of lights, we set on limiters for how far they can travel. So right now, this spotlight's set up pretty well. It's traveling through the scene, but it travels a bit past the wall. So there's no need for it to pa travel past the wall because there's no light exit in the area. 
So we can go up here, get a good perspective, grab this attenuation radius value and drag it down. And then if we, you'll notice, if you watch the preview, we lose a bit, little bit of that fill light and it darkens the shadows on our character when we make the attenuation radius too small. But we want it somewhere around, let's say 650, looks good to me. Now, unique to the spotlight, we have the ability to change the cone angle. We can make that wider or narrower. And that's our spotlight. So those are three of the main types of practical lights you would use that match those on a film set. Now there's two more types of lights and these can get a bit abstract and confusing. One of them going on this scene is this skylight. If we select it over here and then press F, we're taken to this icon here underground. Now I'm just gonna drag this back up so we can see it better in the scene. So this is just the icon. Now the skylight is somewhat special in that it doesn't matter where this is. I could move this anywhere in the scene. It's gonna have the same impact. So what the skylight does is it captures distant parts of the scene and actually uses that lighting and color information to then relight the scene. But practically how it's used on set or in an environment is to fill in the shadows of the scene and act sort of as a fill light. So if I look over here on the right, we've got many of the same details as before. So we're just gonna to go to the details panel and change this to something pretty high, like five. And instantly you see the whole scene light up. Now to get a better idea of how this is actually affecting the scene, let's change the color to something a bit more obvious, like a deep red. And you'll see the whole scene goes red, but especially the shadows and areas that weren't lit well before. So if we go down here, this is a fairly dark area of the scene. Let's turn off the effects world switch. Now this is a great way to keep all these settings the same, but just turn off a light temporarily. So now this is what the scene looks like without the light on. And if I turn it back on, this is what it looks like with it on. So even if we bring this down to something that's not so crazy, like a value of one, you still really notice in the shadows how this light affects the scene. Okay, I'm gonna reset this back to 0.4, make it white again. Now there's other settings in here, and but they're mostly for controlling when the skylight is in a scene where there is a, a sky and a horizon and we wanna project that same color and same atmosphere back onto the scene. So for a scene like this, a skylight isn't really necessary, although it is a very easy way to control how your shadows look. Now the next light I wanna look at is not actually in the scene at the moment. So we're gonna look at adding a light now. So up the top left, there's this little plus icon over a square, over a cube. If I click that, I get this menu and it's got a list of basics, lights, shapes, everything you'd need. I prefer to use the place actors panel, which is that same menu, but it's permanently here on the side. So now instead of scrolling through the menu, we can just move through these sub menus. So I'm gonna click lights and we get a list of all these lights. So we've seen most of these. We've seen, we've talked about the point light, spotlight, rectangle light, and now skylight. And now I wanna show you the directional light. Now the directional light is similar to the skylight in that it doesn't actually matter where in the scene it is, it's gonna have the same effect. But unlike the skylight, the rotation of the light does matter. So if I press E and I get this rotation gizmo and then I left click on one of these arcs, I can change the rotation of this light. Now, just to emphasize this, I can move this light down below into the floor and nothing's gonna change. It looks the same. So what is a directional light for? Well, a directional light is typically used 
to represent the sun. It repre it's a light that's infinitely far away facing one direction. And over here, we've got some different settings you can do to change essentially how soft the shadows are. If you look down here, the default value is set to match the physically correct value from the sun. So for the scene, I've elected not to use a directional light because it's quite unrealistic. You'll not find anything like this on a film set apart from the sun itself. So since we're doing this manufactured scene, I'm gonna just delete that now. So I do that by either clicking the light or clicking up here and just hit in delete and it's gone from our scene. You know what? I also don't think we need the skylight, so I'm gonna delete that as well. And now we're left with this. So that's been an introduction to lights inside Unreal. So we learned some of the different types of lights, how to manipulate them and move them around, and some of the unique properties each one has. If you found that helpful, let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to check out the other three videos in this section, you can find them on unrealfilm.academy. Otherwise, hit the subscribe button and be notified when they're uploaded here on YouTube.